I will be moderating the question and answer section. Will the presentations be recorded or available for viewing? Yes, all our presentations will be available and I, I believe we'll be sending out the link to the website. Okay, this one I'm gonna send to Stan. Do you need to clean out the cracks first? If so, how is that done? Yes, it's a good idea to clean the cracks out. Generally, you wanna sweep it as hard as you can. Any cracks that have vegetation in it, I suggest that you spray those with uh, Roundup or herbicide or something a couple of weeks before you do your scrub seal. And then do your best to clean those out, whether you do that with uh, air or water pressure or hard sweep or something, but you want to remove any as much material from the crack as you can so that it can be filled with uh, emulsion. I'm going to send this next question to you as well. I'm going to do it as a two-part. How do the application of rates of the emulsion and aggregate compare to a chip seal? And what is the square yard cost of a scrub seal versus a chip seal? The first question is the rates are pretty similar, except you generally will have an extra volume allowed for the crack, for cracks that are out there. Most of the designs that I've seen for scrub seal, they'll generally add about a 10% extra volume on top of the chip seal design to try to uh, account for any of the crack volume that you're filling up. As for price, that's really hard to answer uh, when we've got a, a, a region this big. A scrub seal, the emulsions generally do cost a little bit more because you've got, you know, different components in there uh, than you do for a normal chip seal emulsion. Uh, so that makes a little price a little different. Uh, contractors tend to charge just a little bit more too for uh, the fact that they are having to use a broom. Uh, in the process, but in my area per square yard, uh, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not. A, I'm, I'm a technical person, but I can say generally sometimes it's 25 cents or so. I would budget about 25 cents a square yard more uh, in my area, but that'll be different in everybody's area. Can you put a scrub seal on a higher volume route than you put a chip seal? I guess the correct answer for that is it depends. When you say higher volume, I know that there's some areas. Uh, are some test projects that have been done out west for, for what I would call really high volume. You want to make sure that, that you fall within um, sound design metrics of, of your volume. I hate to give a number, but you do want to be careful with that and, and at least uh, count that into your design so that you have a good emulsion rate. And um, I'm going to try to get some questions here to Chris. Uh, can a bio-based rejuvenator extend the life of the asphalt if it doesn't replace the lost small teens? Good question. I think how you have to look at this, it may work, it may work just fine as opposed, you know, we know that a maltine replenishment is a pretty standard practice that's been used for for a number of decades. And that clearly you're putting in more solvent that nat that naturally will help to solvate those asphaltine agglomerates and larger domains that form on aging and that's something that in terms of the product use and how it works is what you want to see just having something that's that's added whether it be a bio-based material or any other material that just literally makes the binder softer and lower viscosity is not really the target you want to be able to actually affect the chemistry of the of the of the asphalt in service if you can, that's the target. Thank you, and I think we'll have time for one more question, and this goes out to the panelists. What does your organization consider a thin overlay, three-fourths of an inch or one inch thick asphalt overlay, a preservation treatment? If so, why or why not? Mark. Three quarters of an inch or less. Technically, maybe seven eighths of an inch, 85 pounds per square yard and, and below. Only because we don't have a program for one inch overlays. Next layer up is we have our inch and a quarter overlay and inch and a quarter mill and inlay program. And that is really the working horse of the TDOT resurfacing program. So we've been doing inch and a quarter mill and inlays and overlays for 30 years. So when we built a thin overlay program, I, we needed to go a little thinner than that. So we consider an inch and a quarter a commodity and three quarters, seven eighths and less than less. Tracy? 
You know, we're similar to Tennessee. We have uh, our workhorse, like like Mark said, is is about an inch a quarter, inch and a half mill and thin overlay. Um, but then we also do the three quarters inch um, thin lays as well. I'll answer it for Arkansas then. We are just starting one inch overlays and we haven't gone below that yet. We do a lot of spray pavers, so we haven't gotten into that realm much. Up until recently, we considered a two inch overlay, a thin overlay. I I guess that is all the time we have. Thank you for everyone for joining. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.